Hi, I'm Jake Wiederberg, On Farm Sustainability Coordinator. Hi, and I'm Cecil Wright, Vice President of Sustainability and Local Operations. And we're here today to talk to you a little bit about Organic Valley Sustainability Program, and more specifically, our biodiesel program. In the background here, you can see our solar panels that we just installed in our headquarters over here to the left, which is a green uh, building install. Our sustainability program at Organic Valley consists of three areas. One is our business operations, where we pay attention to how we are more efficient with our electricity use, how we reduce waste, and how we can do better in transportation in order to lower our carbon footprint in general. Our second phase of sustainability is our employee and community outreach. How are we helping our employees become more sustainable in our community? The third area of sustainability is our on-farm sustainability. This is how we help our farmers become more efficient, how we help them do energy efficiency audits, how we help them get renewable energy products onto their farm, and of course the most important aspect of our on-farm sustainability is our biodiesel program. And today Jake is going to continue our journey about biodiesel and tell us a little bit about where we're going and what we're doing with biodiesel. Jake. We're going to first start down here at the fleet with Zach and see how Organic Valley uses biodiesel and then we're going to see how this application can be on farm with the meal and biodiesel. Let's go. Hey Zach. Hi hey Jake. How you doing today? Not bad, how are you? Good. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm the biodiesel project coordinator here at Organic Valley and we have switched our fleet over in 2002 and have over 2 million miles logged on a B20. And a B20 is 20% biodiesel and 80% petroleum. That's right. Back in 2002 when we switched over our fleet, we stocked up on fuel filters. We changed our program to where we changed our fuel filters every oil change instead of every other oil change. And I can honestly say that we haven't incurred any major problems directly related to biodiesel usage. And biodiesel, when you first start using bio, it has a mild solvent effect on your um, fuel lines and your fuel tank. So it will have a cleaning effect, which will clean out the fungi that has left, been left by petroleum diesel. That's right. I like to tell people that if they understand what diesel fuel they're using and what biodiesel they're using in their fuel system that they can absolutely have a very positive experience in biodiesel usage. And the cold flow, what types of temperatures have you worked in with the fleet? I've ran biodiesel clear down to 30 below zero. And a B20, right? 20% biodiesel, 80% petroleum. Absolutely. We've also used as much as a B50 in the winter time, but only in our, our equipment we use for snow removal and things like that. And you can switch back and forth between uh, diesel and biodiesel? Absolutely. You haven't you don't have to do any major modifications to your engine to use biodiesel. Any modifications, right? Any modifications as far as that goes. But we can use biodiesel or we can use straight diesel. The engine doesn't it doesn't matter. So this video is about on-farm biodiesel, so let's go out there and see how it's grown. Let's go. Hey Josh, how's it going? Good. How you doing, Jake? Good. Hey, hey Josh, how you doing? Good. Nice to see you. So what do we have here? Oh, we got a field of sunflowers, oilseed sunflowers. Um, when were they planted? Well, these ones went in on the 24th of June. And, uh, Is that normal? Yeah, it's a little late. I'd like to get them in usually around the first week of June, you know, end of May. But uh, the ground's a little warmer then. Plant them then, they come right up. So we're at about 90 days then here? Yep, we'll just throw around 90 days. Uh, they got what, kind of, what kind of tillage practices did you use? Well, we, uh, this was um, planted into hairy vetch last fall, and, uh, and then this spring we plowed it under a uh, chisel plow, and then dissed it, and then finished it a couple times, and then planted the sunflowers right into that. Nice. They look really clean. You must have to cultivate them. 
Yeah, we've cultivated uh, we cultivated this uh, these ones twice, just regular Danish uh, Danish oral, Danish time oral cultivator. So you planted right with your corn planter? Yep. Uh, we, had an, we had an IH uh, or a white, I should say, a white 5100 oral corn planter. How many uh, how many seeds to the acre? Uh, I was putting them in at right around 23,000, I think. So. So just about the same as corn then. Yeah, a little less than corn. What variety was this? These are uh, Tetons. They're a hyaluric uh, oil seed variety. Nice. And this variety is about 46% oil? 48? Yeah, it's some, somewhere around 45 to 50% oil is what that's rated at. So. Mm -hmm. so, and soybeans are about 17 to 20, so yeah, almost, but twice, yeah. almost twice, a little over twice. Have you ever drilled sunflowers in? No, I never tried drilling them in. Uh, talked about doing a little field this spring. I mean, that's how they're doing sunflowers out on the Dakotas is they're drilling them, but I've never. Mm -hmm. And you're going to harvest them with your corn combine? Yeah, just a uh, regular John Deere combine. Uh, I got an old row crop bean head that I use to do them. You can also do it with a with just a regular grain head. So you're just, you don't need to go buy some fancy sunflower attachment for your combine? No, but you can even run through a just regular corn head on it too and it'll get most of them. So. Nice. Yeah. Real nice. Uh, what's some other types of oilseed crops that you've heard about or thought about growing? Well, uh, let's see here. Soybeans, flax. Um, Camelina. Camelina. Uh, and all those can be grown organically? Yep, pretty readily. Yep. So the, the one I, the only other one I've tried this year was uh, flax and last year I had a little uh, field of camelina up on top of the hill here. So. Nice. And what so, uh, moisture are you going to take these at? Well, I've been talking about taking them a little earlier this year because the birds seem to get into them once they dry down. and. So somewhere between 15 and 20 percent, we might be able to take them off the field at. So. And then put them into a drying floor. Or a uh, yeah, put them in an air air bin. That can dry them down a little mm -hmm. bit. You want to get them down around 10 or 12, 10 to 12 to store them. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then nine for we like to get for them long term storage about nine percent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, nice. All right. I think what we'll do now is we'll head on over to uh, to demonstrate the uh, oil seed press. Thanks a lot, Josh. Yep. Thanks, Thanks Josh. Zach. Yep. Bye now. See you, Jake. Yep. See you, Josh.